to play a little bit of what I thought was my masterpiece from At the Rat. Yeah. You guys are all familiar with that album, right? Yeah. It's, it, no, it, it's finally on a CD. Um, so, so I'll just play a little bit. Of it. It's like, and this this song would be a good example of um, of like a medley. I mean, this little bit of a poem here, and this, and it's like three or four things at the beginning of the song that I had written down and nothing else after a certain point. And then it's just, to me, in those days, I was trying to get to this point where it's almost non-verbal. I called it Gaga back then. You know, it was like Willy Logo, Boom Boom Gaga is the name of this. And it's like, you know, it's stuff from, uh, from 75 to 91. This is like, you know, predates Lady Gaga. But, you know, the Queen came out with a Gaga song, and, and Matthew McKenzie had Gaga in the lake. Gaga's an old thing. It's like, you know, skeezix or something. Okay, so this is pop tune. I mean, this is not a good example of how to write songs, but this is a great progression. You can write a million songs out of this progression. Just like, you know, it's just E flat, A flat, B flat. And that's it, and the same amount of bars on all of them. But before going back to the E flat sometimes, towards the middle and at the end of the song, the guitar player plays a D flat. And it's like, whoa. And it, it makes all the difference. And rhythmically, I mean, this, you know, I, I could never repeat this except for the stuff that was written down. You know, and I'd always just improvise different stuff to it, but this is it. We kind of mess up the beginning, but it doesn't matter. It's supposed to have like a, a line and then boom, and then boom, boom, that doesn't happen. But it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Where is it? Okay, number eight. So this is pop tune. And it's hilarious. The words are hilarious. It's, you know, it's about a dog throwing up panties. And, and <laughs> it's like, what the hell is he writing about? People like this stuff. But when I got my big deal with the record company, it was like, we don't want to do any of this. That one actually got airplay. But the record was in France, so you couldn't buy it here. There's Mass Ave. Does this sound like the Beach Boys? This is the one I can tell that where the vocal is like. He weaves a little bit here. So he, he could sing fun, fun. That's style. Here's it. Here good. We'll have fun, fun, fun to do again. Oh yeah. That's, and the reason that the, the bass and the drum the drums come in there is because the, the engineer forgot to push something up. So it's like we got the wreck and we're mixing, it's like that's where it has to be. But then we, we worked it into the arrangement. It's like, wow, this is great dynamics, man. <laughs> you know, but it was all a mistake. But, you know, so those, the mistakes of the, you know, it's like most of my good, good chords are, are mistakes. So I'll play a pop tune. I mean, really, seriously. I, I would buy chord books sometimes to try and, and, and be legit. But man, I, I, you know, it's like, okay, this is a, this kind of a chord, and these are the inversions and uh, aversions and perversions of it. And it's like, oh, I'm getting a real headache here. And so I'd get like three versions of it, and it's like, wow, this sounds so cool. So I'd get what sounded like a, a nice progression, and I'd just put the book down for another four years or something. You know, so I'm, I'm a really bad student. Willie, when you were in that place where you were finding these interesting places and chords and everything. Did you write them down? Because how would you no. remember them? I have to tape them. And then hopefully you could find them. Well, that's what, it's like, you know, I had my 70th birthday and, and guys are playing material from like, I don't even remember that I had written. And it's like, I had, a, I had to ask him for the chords. I had to ask Roger Miller what were the chords to work in hard. It's like, I thought I knew and I thought it was really simple, but I didn't, okay. you know. So it's like, you forget, unless you play them all the time. Okay, here's, here's, here's the masterpiece. Is it? Can you hear that? That's probably Johnny Ray, all that uh, 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 stuff. Boom! That's a little 
Passed out in Miss Veronica. Mm. Passed out in Miss Veronica. Veronica. The creature from the Black Lagoon was a love of food. It's the panty part. No, I don't care. Oh, it was a red set. So, you know, as a performer, I love singing this stuff. Because it's like, it's a horror. It's horror. <laughs> So from here on in, it's all. And I realized I stole this part from that comedian, Mama Papa Alan Sherman or something. This whole lick. It's like, oh man. That's the falsetto. No words. like list sort of this is pseudo Spanish stuff because I love Afro Cuban music. So I'm just talking about all the Tito's coming as a drum. Love seeing tools. That kind of stuff. Space is good. a little thing. I love Phil Spector. They I love you. Ronnie Spector. I thought I was her some nights. And that was a good thing. And it's equal in the audience, you know, approaching the song. I can tell how drunk I am, how the picture is. It was pretty, I know it was drinking, but it's not totally off. I didn't throw this in the way. That's, that's my whole thing. It's not writing songs, it's just, it's just rhythm. Rhythm is the whole thing. You can get away with anything. Donna Summers, Boston Sound. I must have swallowed my gum. I did try and sing and chew gum. You know, this is my music, but... You not, don't hear that stuff on Top 40 Radio, but man, it's a blast to, to do it, you know? So a lot of my stuff... Now that's sampling myself, I'm throwing it on something else. And this is another true story about a, a guy who was killed in a bar. But this is off just a loop. After this one. I'm almost out of these. The record company, you know, when they went out of business, they said, Willie, we got boxes of these things, we'll give you a deal on them. I'm almost out of them now. There's a song about Gloucester here. Here's one that, that could come back as a, as a hit, probably. It's called SOS. So I should start doing this one again since, you know, heroin's back. I first heard about Vincent Farina, saw Vincent Farina in the newspaper talking about this problem. 
in a Boston newspaper. Eric Lindgren gave me these two chords. He was a good guy to work with. He would modulate a lot of my stuff so that I couldn't even play it. So now you have to play the piano. Just like Dunkin' Donuts, seven dollars you get I know. Seems like it's happening everywhere, even in Vermont, for gosh sakes. Everywhere. Right. Emotion's always good in a song if you can get an emotion. Or make people feel something. Great guitar player, Rupert Webster. I call this style of guitar playing a wounded animal. It's not like dinosaur fights and stuff. This one's actually pretty musical, but my friend Eric, you know, he got this whole vamp where it goes down some kind of thing that he wrote out, and he, he got a he got a cellist in there, and he had a charts for him. The whole works. I mean, my stuff's really simple. And sometimes he could make it a little more better by his knowledge that I didn't have. Like here's an example. Uh, I have this song called Like Trash, and it's just like a Spanish mode. And then it goes to this. But, but, and I was going, I was doing something, and he said, no, go down with the left hand. So it went like. That dissonance is, makes it good, you know? So it's like. I could play the, and this is, a lot of my songs are like just two lines, and you just repeat them, because repetition is the key. So you don't have a lot, you have not, like my first record had, had you know, 10,000 lyrics, but it's like, they're gone in a minute. But, so. People, people throw each other away like trash, like trash. People throw each other away like trash, like trash. For a little money, for a little cash. For a little honey. afraid to use a whole hand on a piano. For a piece of ass. And then the saxophone comes in and goes nuts. And, 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 and Jim Darty's going nuts on the drum, so it's like, okay, I better use the foot pedal on this one so I can mush them together and go. And, and do all the Cecil Taylor stuff. So, so you know, there's a two-liner. Some of my songs, and it was like the Vincent album, a lot of his poems that I used were just one line. But, you know, how do you do that for three minutes? You just repeat them. Sing them a little different the second time around. Should I play? Should I play a whole song? <sighs> Any requests? Play a Vincent one? Okay. From easy. This is house. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, here's a good Vincent one. Uh, with the Vincent Farini stuff, Henry originally asked me after Vincent had passed, and there was going to be a memorial service at, at the city hall. I said, Willie, maybe you could, you know, try and put some music to some of his stuff. And I hadn't thought of that. 
So, you know, I kind of look in some things and I, I tried a few things. And I didn't actually end up recording any of those, but I used some of those. And, and uh, I, I did about six songs. And, I, and I, the goal was to get them played at Virgilio's because they have, you know, Vincent was Italian-American and, and all the music they play in there is like, you know, it's Italian-American music, usually by, you know, pop stars and stuff like, you know, Dean Martin and people like that. I said, maybe if I get, you know, fit some Vincent stuff in there. So I was conscious of like, not using like, you know, throwing up p panties and, and, uh, and, you know, all my usual stuff. Because like, people are trying to buy subs and food and then they get children <laughs> in there. <laughs> so I kept it pretty, you know, on the up and up. And I, you know, it's not, I, I don't go out of my way to, to, you know, write those things. It's just, you know, I just write them. But anyway, I worked my way up to some of his real greatest hits. He had some poems that were really significant for lots of people. Most of the stuff I just picked out because they, they caught my eye and I thought I could do something with it. It's not like it's my favorite poem or anything, or it's a big famous one. But this one, this one was a big famous one. So I didn't think I was worthy of it after the first, I had to work my way up to it. T Max always asked for when I play it at Giuseppe's. So the gold. Know, the gold. This is the gold. The gold. This is the gold. <laughs> I also used this progression on one other song, I have to admit to you. It was called New Siren in Abilene. Sorry, Vincent. I didn't, the, the other part was, was new. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, you can steal from yourself. It's, you know, and nobody ever heard New Siren in Abilene anyway. <laughs> no, I don't remember that one. <laughs> it's supposed to be four. Try and keep four bars in between each one of these chords, but it's really difficult. The suddenness, flowers have styles the air with the fire and ether. The suddenness. Flowers have startles the air with their fire and ether. As we do with what is ours because we are the gardeners of each other as we do it what is ours because we are the gardeners of each other use minor chords. They always sound good, they always get people. As we do it, what is ours? Because we are the gardeners of each other. with another Vincent one that's another two liner but maybe you guys can just repeat them with me and if you can beat out some kind of rhythm on your laps or on the floor it's kind of free but it's really kind of 6A like which is or you could just sing yeah 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 yeah
going. What can I be taken away? A temple outside of me. Thank you.